Okay, so uh, we are going to present uh, a project called ISLA. Um, uh, it's an ongoing project, um, and uh, it probably uh, the presentation will probably be different from the other research talks because uh, in this project, uh, in the first phase of the project, we focus mainly on uh, the development of an iCore system, Intelligent Computer Assisted Language Learning System. And today uh, we will present as a team. Um, um, so it's, it's not going to be only me talking. Uh, our other team members will also present um, part of the contents. Yeah, so um, we will first of all give you an introduction of the project, basically the, the context under which we are working. Um, and then we will present to you the theoretical backgrounds of, of the design of the ICOR system. And then we'll uh, present to you briefly the system architecture, give you a demonstration of um, the system we uh, are developing. So uh, the current state of the system. Uh, this is the, also the first time we show the system to um, people um, outside of the team. So yeah, um, if things are not working, um, as expected, please uh, don't be too critical. <laughs> We're still working on it. Um, yeah, and then we'll uh, talk about the, the developmental outlook and then also the research opportunities um, that we think uh, will um, come out from the development work. Then we'll have some time for questions and answers. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, first of all, an int introduction to the project. Uh, this is a three year project. Uh, it's called ISLA, which um, we think is a cool name because it stands for AI and Second Language Acquisition. Um, it's a three year project funded by the uh, German Ministry of Education uh, with uh, about yeah, a little bit more than half a million euros. Um, yeah, and the, the goal of the project is to basically <clears throat> Um, implement an Android uh, mobile app for spoken English training uh, with AI technologies. Um, and we plan to uh, target the uh, uh, gymnasium curriculum, seventh grade, one, one, one academic year. Um, the curriculum of the uh, Baden-Württemberg gymnasium um, in Germany and uh, the plan is to, in, uh, to implement 100 uh, conversation tasks across uh, 20 real life scenarios. So um, yeah, the, the project team consists of system developers, content designers and SRA experts. So we try to um, create a system based on uh, solid uh, SRA uh, theories and research findings. Um, and we um, yeah, try to uh, in integrate the latest technologies in speech recognition, natural language processing, including natural language understanding and natural language generation. Um, and um, the goal is to create a task-based conversation agent um, and uh, it will be implemented on a mobile platform. Um, and we uh, would like to support both speech and text interaction. Um, and uh, the whole project is guided uh, by uh, the design principles of TBLT, task-based language teaching, and uh, second language acquisition theories. Um, yeah, uh, another feature of the project is that we uh, are integrating um, something called adaptive feedback or dynamic feedback. Um, then these uh, feedback engines, uh, currently we are thinking of uh, uh, reusing or integrating the technology developed in another research project. Um, of um, our team, um, mostly Deadmas team. Um, yeah, and we try to integrate also other uh, learning support tools, um, as you will see uh, in a bit when we do the demo. So this is the context of the project, and then I will turn over to um, Bronson to give us um, to to tell us something about the design. Um, principles or the theoretical basis for the development. Um, hi everyone, my name is Bronston, so I'm the uh, language learning guy, if you will, on the team. Um, so the first question that we want to address is why do we need the NICOR system, right? Uh, so a lot of language learning happens in the classroom, and now that you know um, mobile apps are, are getting more and more common. 
So we uh, thought about it, and then these three features, you know, um, uh, of iCall uh, are actually pretty, you know, um, cutting edge in terms of addressing some some pressing issues that we have in SLA. So number one, adaptability, right? So uh, ideally, when it is fully developed, we might be able to, you know, address individual differences, you know, um, potentially giving the right kind of feedback, if you will, to the right kind of learners for the right kind of, you know, uh, uh, linguistic structures. Uh, scalability, right? So we will be able to scale our invest, uh, scale up our investigation. So, so we know that in SLA research or in ISLA research, in instructed SLA research, that sample sizes are often very small. So, so if we have an iCore system, you know, anybody with a mobile phone can have access to to you know the uh, uh, materials that we have. So in a way, then it also promotes social justice because we have to be honest and acknowledge that you know not everybody has equal access to to quality education, teachers, and materials, right? So here we are talking about underrepresented uh, uh, student populations. We are talking about uh, students in rural areas, in developing countries, and so on. Um, finally, uh, I think this is also a very good. Um, uh, advantage, if you will, uh, of an iCore system. That is, our investigation then focus can can focus on learning processes, right? So researchers in SLA have been arguing that we have to use, for example, think aloud data, eye tracking, and so on to really understand what is happening during learning, right? Um, with an iCore system, we can have all the system logs, and we argue that you know potentially that can provide a window. Um, for, for researchers to understand how learning takes place. So in terms of um, the design principles, right? So ultimately we want to, you know, through our design of the system, we want to influence the learning processes. Here I have Mike Long's uh, definition of ISLA. Um, so whenever the learning processes are influenced, or at least are intended to be influenced, um, then we are uh, uh, doing our job as, as a teacher or as uh, language researchers. So we have been saying that, you know, we, we try to um, uh, follow TBLT, you know, as, as a guiding principle, um, but we also are aware that, you know, what it means to be a task can be, you know, a, a topic of debate. Um, but here uh, I'm presenting, you know, at a curriculum level, right, uh, how, how TBLT might work. You know, we will start with needs analysis, um, trying to understand what students needs in terms of, of uh, um, language um, to perform daily life tasks. And then we would develop different tasks and then sequence them according to cognitive complexity. Again, there is a, a, a huge amount of debate there. Um, how, how do we measure complexity and, and, and stuff? Um, but at the end of the uh, curriculum, then we will have exit tasks as assessment, um, and that should be um, um, aligned with, with the initial uh, needs analysis that we do. If we zoom in, um, thinking about a particular task, so what is a task, right? Um, so, so Rod Ellis gave these definitions, right? So if these criteria are met, um, then, then it can be considered a, a task. So number one, we have to focus on meaning. Number two, there needs to be a gap, you know, be it an info gap, be it an opinion gap or whatnot. Um, learners have to rely on their own resources, right? Linguistic, non-linguistic resources, and there should be an outcome. So when we design activities or tasks, um, you know, uh, uh, we're trying to closely follow uh, these principles. And within each task, there might be different steps, right? So this is a typical, you know, task-based uh, 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 language learning kind of procedure, right? So you have pre-task activities, and then students actually get to perform the task, and then there will be a language focus at the end of it. At the same time, you know, this uh, really bottom-up, you know, starting from the task uh, kind of approach may or may not be applicable uh, because, after all, we are working with schools, right? So they. They, you know, this project is funded by the Ministry of Education in Germany, so they have a set curriculum. Um, so they say, for example, in seventh grade, you know, these items need to be taught, right? So, so we are working with boundary. Another SLA theory that we think is applicable here is more top down, right? Where we have a set curriculum um, and then we would teach it and then we would provide opportunities for students to learn it, right? So this is a skill learning theory. Um, where students first acquire uh, declarative knowledge and then through practice they will proceduralize it and automatize it. 
So here practice is really ex a repeated exposure and production opportunities. And perhaps this would match, you know, the kind of uh, language teaching that is actually happening in real life, you know, um, then, then our uh, system then provide you know opportunity in the last stage of the PPP methodology, right? So we 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 let students to practice and production, right? So so it's a more top down. Uh, uh, we work with a structural syllabus. Oftentimes, you know, it's linguistic based. Um, uh, but but this is how, how how things work, you know, in terms of curriculum. Um, but but the the after all the the ultimate goal is to provide contextual opportunities for students to use the target item. So now I will pass the time back to Xiaobing, who is going to talk about the um, system architecture. Yeah. Um, let me check a little bit. I hope we are still there. <laughs> yeah. So um, here is the, the, uh, the architecture of the system. Um, we can start from um, this uh, um, block here, which is the ISLA server. Basically, that's the main um, uh, component we are we are we have been developing. Um, it is um, it's going uh, it, it functions as the bridge between the user interface and the uh, um, various modules. Um, um, yeah, we are we are we are building for the system. So um, the Isla server um, um, is basically a coordinator um, and a, a bridge between the UI and the backend components. And on the back end, um, on the other side of, of, of the, the plot, we um, are using um, a conversation um, task based um, conversation agent system from Amazon Web Service. It's a commercial engine, and uh, we are uh, implementing our uh, conversation tasks um, as uh, basically task based uh, conversation um, bots. Um, they are not general purpose chatbots, but um, they are conversation agents. Uh, they control the conversation flow and um, deal with the interaction and a lot of NLP tasks. So <clears throat> we um, are creating a, a bot database um, consisting of um, bots for different tasks uh, embedded into different scenarios. And um, yeah, there's also a controlling bot. We call it controlling bot, which is basically an interface to the different tasks. For example, the, the users can use the controlling bot to, for example, start a certain task or to ask for a more challenging task or a less challenging task uh, or a task uh, to, for example, um, a task that enables them to focus on a specific linguistic construct if they want to um, uh, learn certain, um, for example, grammar constructs. OK, so that's the, the entry point for uh, to the to the different tasks. And then we have a general uh, Q&A bot, which uh, um, basically makes use of the um, search engine technology from Apache uh, Lucent. So we use that for um, out of task, out of context uh, Q and A's from the learners um, because we experience that um, when, when we when we um, give the app to the to, to, to children to the students they would kind of they are kind of curious and um, would like to ask all kinds of questions that are not specific to a certain task. Um, so, for example, they ask, what can you do? How old are you? Are you a boy or a girl? Yeah, if you have ever allowed a child to interact with uh, Siri or Alexa or the Google Assistant, you would notice that uh, they are curious about these kind of things. So we have a Q&A bot uh, for dealing with these kind of questions. And then we try to integrate all kinds of language tools, including machine translation, uh, electronic dictionaries, grammar tutors uh, into the bot database as well, so that we can handle um, different um, learning uh, requests. Um, and then, <clears throat> of course, we also have a, a locking engine uh, with which we lock um, every uh, interaction the user has with the system. Um, uh, and then the login data will be used for, for research purposes. Um, and uh, for, for each utterance, basically, uh, that is what we are currently uh, working on, started working on um, the in-house um, feedback engine. 
So we know when uh, students are using the target language, um, the second language they are learning, they tend to make uh, mistakes. Um, so we need to kind of, uh, because we it's a, uh, it's a system um, designed to, to help students learn the language, we would like to provide some feedback so that they can better acquire the language. So um, once they, um, so for every interaction they have with the system, we, uh, if there are, if um, their utterances uh, contains, if their utterances contain errors, um, then we provide them with um, all kinds of feedback. Um, currently we are uh, implementing these different types of explicit and implicit feedback. Um, we are able to, uh, for example, give recasts, uh, basically corrected uh, feedback to the utterance. Uh, we can also um, ask for clarif clarification or confirmation, these kind of things. Um, yeah, uh, you will you'll see that in the uh, demonstration. Maybe not, no, not today, but yeah, we have uh, started <laughs> developing the feedback engine. Okay, so this is the system architecture. Uh, so basically each block in this diagram would take us a few months to work on. So yeah, uh, we are still at the very early stage of the project. We are in the, still in the first year, end of the first year. Um, yeah, and I think we can now then turn to the system demonstration. Elizabeth is going to give us a, a demonstration of the system. Um, let me stop the presentation and how do I stop it from here? Yeah. Okay, are you seeing the mobile phone interface? Uh, yes, we are. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, no problem. <laughs> So hello everyone, my name is Elizabeth and I'm the content developer on the team. So I'll be showing some of the features of our app. So you can see this is like a mobile phone. So the students can open the app. Okay. So after they log in, this will be like our home screen. So these are some example messages we can see, like welcome to the Isla app, my name is Isla. And of course, this will be different depending on whether the students are logging in for the first time or logging in again. We can maybe give a little bit of information about two. And, and we can see here we have the microphone icon and we purposely made this bigger because we want to encourage the students to speak uh, before typing. So I can say, I can show maybe the Q&A portion of Isla. I can say something like, where are you from? And so that if I want to check my pronunciation, I can play that back. Where are you from? And here we can see Isla's answer. And we can play it uh, with text, with, um, yes, text to speech. I was created in Germany, but my creators are from all over the world. And I can maybe show one more example. How old are you? I was born in 2021. So when we have the real app, uh, we will play it automatically, but for now we have to click on the recording, but we do want it to be more natural natural and more dialogue like. Uh, and if I want to, I can also change the settings. Because now we can see, I can change it to audio interaction first. Because before we could see the text, but if we want it to more mimic a real life conversation where the students have to listen and speak without seeing the text, we could have it like this. So then they would have to listen without seeing the text written. I was born in 2021. But for this demo, I'll show the text because I think that's a bit easier to follow. And we wanted uh, this to be as close to a dialogue 
talk as possible. So we want the student to be able to say something like, I want to practice in a restaurant or I want to practice ordering food. Um, so they can do that by requesting that directly. They can also type. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I want to practice English. So then it understood, um, I, I want to practice English. And if they didn't say something like a restaurant, then we'll ask, where do you want to practice? Um, so then I could say, um, I want to practice at a restaurant or I want to practice ordering food. I want to practice ordering food in a restaurant. Oh, and this doesn't work quite as well as with the real phone because it's a little bit different. So maybe I'll just try that again by typing. And I think I haven't mentioned yet. So if the student wants to switch to typing, they can click on this icon here. Oh, is it because? Yeah, we are already in the intent oh, okay. so we have to answer the questions. Yeah. Okay, so now I have to say at a restaurant first. And we'll work out all of this, um, but we're still in the early stages of the development. Okay, so I said I wanted to practice at a restaurant, so now I can give more information. We have different tasks like booking a table, ordering food, paying. So for this demo, I'll show ordering. Oops, that might work. Let's see. Okay, it didn't work. No, uh, a typo. Yeah. Uh, okay, so it understood that request. So now it's um, it uh, changes the the screen from the home bot to kind of the task um, layout. Um, and so for each task, we'll have the type of task card where it's the name of the task and we have the goal. So for this task, it's you will learn how to order food and drinks at a restaurant. And here we have the instructions for the task and this connects back to TBLT. So I did kind of a needs analysis. What kind of language will the, stu will the student um, need? Um, to complete the goal of this task. And in, in this case, it's ordering food and drinks at a restaurant. And we have a sample video as well that the students can choose to watch before they begin. And I'll, I'll just show the beginning of that. Can I start you off with something to do? Oh. Our internet seems to be a little bit slow. I, um, I can maybe, it's okay if we don't see it this time. I might just try again. Can I start you up with something to do? Yeah, sorry, I think the internet is a little bit too slow, but, and then, how can I close? Oh, outside, here? outside. Oh, yeah. But we will have a sample video here, so then the student knows what they should do during the dialogue. And we can also click on the key language as well. And we wanted to give the students options. For example, if they choose to repeat a task, they may not want to watch the video every time or go over the key language every time. Um, so it will say something like, would you like to look at some of the key language? And I can say yes. So it'll show some of the key expressions that they know that they should use during the dialogue. So in this case, it's polite requests and modals like I'll have, I'll take, can I have this? And then they can click on practice dialogue to start the actual task. use the typing for mm -hmm. the video. Yeah, so I'll just use the typing for this, but no, they can't see so that. And move, move pick up. Okay. Yes. Thank you. So this is like the first turn of the dialogue. So Isla will say something like, can I start you off with something to drink? 
and I can use one of these expressions here, but I don't have to. But I could say something like I will have a cook. And so it understood that. And um, there are different uh, variations of these. Um, so here, ISA responds by saying sure, but um, it will be different every time because we wanted it to look more intelligent. So there, so um, if I did this again, it might say, it might say something like oh of course or certainly, and then so the next task would be or a slot would be and what would you like to eat? And for this task, um, I wanted to force the students to practice asking questions, um, so they would say something like, "Can you tell me about today's?" Oops. Come on. Today's specials. So again, this might be something like sure or certainly, depending on if you do it again. And then it presents uh, the specials. So then the student could again use the target language. I'll take a cheeseburger. And I did want to mention uh, we talked about the feedback, so it's possible that the students might make mistakes when they use these. They might say something like I will to take or I want have. So then in the future we're talking about how and where to put that feedback and what type of feedback. And um, I also wanted to show. Uh, the text bubbles as well. Um, so we will have translations here, and this is just um, kind of a placeholder for now, and it's for German. Um, but for example, if a, a user in China was using the system and they had a Chinese um, computer, it would automatically translate it into Chinese, and then we will have the feedback here. And one more feature is if the student gets stuck, maybe they don't know what to do. We'll have some sample expressions here. And for now, these are just placeholders. Um, but in the future, we will have it for each slot. So for example, um, now Isla said, and anything else, if the student doesn't know what to do next, they could click here and they would get some hints about what language they could use. Was that mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and also for the um, language um, or the actors um, by the system or by ISA, uh, we also have analysis, right? Here we give the translation, the, uh, we, we, we point out um, the, the key language, but of course, uh, as uh, Elizabeth said, uh, these are currently only placeholders, but in the future, uh, we also plan to have uh, more detailed analysis of each utterance if uh, it is related to the target construct we are trying to teach. So yeah, um, it is, they, uh, it's possible for them to see um, also the analysis of Isla's language, not only their, their own utterances. Yeah, that's uh, basically the system. Um, and then maybe we can continue with the uh, other topic. So um, the, what we plan to do uh, in the future and actually started um, some of these things. Um, we can start from here from current slide. <clears throat> yeah, so about uh, developmental outlook, um, we, uh, as you can see now the app only features the text or audio interaction. You don't see your um, your in interaction partner, right? You don't see Isla as a big figure in front of you, but um, that is something we also plan to do um, at, the, at the later stage of the project. So we will be able to embed this uh, system we are developing or the technology we are developing into some animated uh, pedagogical agents. Um, um, or we can uh, basically run the system in some robots 
or um, put it under the skin of some human-like uh, so-called deep fake agents, like what you are seeing here. So we can um, basically, with AI um, technologies, we can now generate very um, realistic uh, human uh, agents, um, and then we can embed the conversation system we are currently building uh, into the um, uh, human-like agents and then uh, basically make them uh, speak uh, uh, or, or function as a, a competent interlocutor um, with the, for the for the students and also uh, it's possible also to uh, embed it into some robotics um, like I think this one I don't know whether you are aware of it it's also from the UK uh, ECMA I think that's the name uh, if you don't know about it uh, maybe you can search for the name um, and then um, see that it, it actually features very um, human-like naturalistic uh, facial expressions and I, I would believe that these kind of things uh, will also uh, facilitate uh, language acquisition because there are studies for example uh, if you have an animated pedagogical agent it enhances learning outcomes and brain activities during learning and if you have um, um, so like in this study, the second point here, they uh, found that uh, with animated avatars plus voice instead of text chatbots, they increase uh, psycholo psychophysiological uh, arousal um, of, the, of the learners. So this will um, yeah, um, have a social aspect um, for the language learning uh, experience. Um, yeah, these are some of the things we plan to add. Other types of feedback, pronunciation, pragmatic uh, strategies, and also adding some cultural notes um, to the system so that they can also learn about the target language culture. And of course, this kind of system would offer us a lot of uh, research opportunities. Um, I don't know, maybe yeah, our time is up. I don't think we need to go through all of them uh, in great detail because these are quite obvious, right? Yeah, yeah. so now we can maybe uh, turn to the uh, audience and see if they have any questions. <laughs>